Let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the children, be upon his children throughout the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. Blasphemy and evil communication are unpardonable. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Second lesson, James chapter 3, verse 6. Golden text, St. Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Let no evil communication proceed out of your mouth. Quote, Brethren, what is read to you constitutes the theme of our lesson this morning. There is every element of truth in the statement made. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. It is the same as the passage which says, How hardly shall they that have wishes enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. It is also exactly as the story of Shylock and Anthony. Anthony was indebted to Shylock to the tune of a large sum of money. If Anthony was unable to refund, Shylock was to get a pound of flesh from near his heart. During the judgment, it was held that a pound of flesh should be exacted as earlier agreed but upon what that no drop of blood should spill on the ground. How will it be possible to cut off a pound of flesh from a person's body without spilling blood? How will a camel pass through the eye of a needle? How will it be possible that when you blaspheme against the Son of Man, you will be forgiven? The Word is God. It is said, I and the Father are one. God is the Word. It is said, whoever makes blasphemous statements will not be forgiven. Such a person stands to perish. Whoever allows evil communication to proceed out of his mouth is defenseless. The message here is short. Do not let evil words proceed out of your mouth. Do not speak evil because what brings confusion and trouble into the world are evil utterances of your mouth. Who is the Holy Spirit? Is it not the Word? In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That is why we are told not to utter evil words. Do not make vile statements. Whenever evil words proceed out of your mouth, you are at your wit's end. The word can make and unmake. Your mother does not kill you. Your father does not kill you. It is the word of your mouth that kills. Because whoever speaks evil is in danger of such a word rebounding on him. The word is God. That means when you speak evil words, you have defiled and disgraced God. When you speak evil words, these words will bounce on you as a boomerang. And this alone makes peace in your life an illusion. You are afraid of witchcraft, mermaid, and apparition. Who is witchcraft? It is the word. What is mermaid? It is the word. 
What is apparition? It is the word. All these evil tendencies are words. Who is the Holy Spirit? It is the word of God. What is the evil spirit? Is it not evil words? Insinuation is satanic. Whoever professes to be a man of God but does not bridle his tongue, his religion is vain. In many things we offend, but if there is any person who does not offend with his tongue, such a person is perfect. You can be forgiven if you smite someone. You can be forgiven when you refuse somebody food. And if you refuse giving alms, you can be forgiven. But the moment you say to somebody, woe betides you, or rain abuses on him, it will not be forgiven you. You are witnesses to the fact that you can erect and hand over a magnificent building to a person gratis. But when any evil word proceeds out of your mouth to defile the beneficiary, it makes the gift useless and worthless to him. You can get hold of somebody and smite him hard. A bystander may instigate that you hit him really hard, torture him, torment him. He will no longer be cross with you, but rather with the person insinuating somebody, something serious can happen to you. Instead of somebody coming to console you, he will begin to fan the ember of anger that that thing happens to you because you are so proud, pompous and arrogant. You may forget about what is happening to you and turn to vent your anger for his insinuations. Good words are better than gold. That is why it is said whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man shall be forgiven, but whosoever speaks evil against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven, neither in this world nor in the world to come. What sets fire into the entire world is the evil word that proceeds out of your mouth. The word is like a piece of dry bamboo. The moment it is broken, that is the end of it. There will be no way of joining it again. You have also heard the first lesson read to you. It says that whosoever is angry with his brother is in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council of the Sanhedrins. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be liable to the punishment of hellfire. No pleading will help you out. It confirms the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ which says, Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. The word is spirit. Food is carnal, cloth is carnal, house is carnal, and all the things you see around you are carnal, but the word is spiritual. Because of this, we should be very, very cautious in what we say. We should not allow evil communication to proceed out of our mouth. Whatever will be capable of defiling any person should not be spoken. If you say something in a joke, it must stand. If you say it in a playful mood, it must stand because the word is God. That is why you are advised to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to write. Anything you refer to as witchery is the word. 
There is nothing called mermaid apart from the word. There is no other thing you refer to as apparition excepting the word. The word gives life. The word also kills. The word impoverishes people. The word also cures your illness. The whites have manufactured every other thing, but they have not manufactured the word. We should not toy with the word because the word is God. Anybody who speaks vile words has no forgiveness. Do not think that it is that person or the other man who wants to kill or harm you. It is the evil words from your mouth which are capable of killing you. When somebody orders you to withdraw your vain statement, it is comparable to somebody who fires a gun with bullets at another person. When the person dies, can you withdraw the bullets from the deceased and make him whole and live and alive again? Man can live by the word of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God and God himself, knows the efficacy of words and that is why he says that whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. He alone understands that the word is God. That is why you have never heard him making any evil utterances. That was why when Satan told him, if you are really the son of God, command that this stone be made bread. And he answered saying, it has been written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Good words bring forth goodness and evil words and evil communication bring forth evil things. There are good words in the mouth of a parrot, but he commences his statement with evil. The word when spoken is not amendable. You acclaim yourself to be wise people, professors. You claim you can go to the moon, the stars, and to the planets. Why do you not understand that when evil words proceed out of your mouth, these words are capable of killing you? If you have food to give to somebody who has not got food, do so. But if you do not have, but if you do not have, speak no evil against him. Leave him alone. Even if it is your wife, do not speak evil against her. If you can beat her up, since you take delight in beating up people, since you will share in the pain, but be sure you do not speak what is evil. There is nothing in this world capable of destroying as the word. If you damage somebody's property, it is easier to buy or mend it for him, but the word is not amendable. When at the battlefield, unless the commander orders the soldiers to fire, they cannot fire. If you are taken to a court, if the chief judge does not sentence you to any term of imprisonment or fine, you cannot be convicted if you go to somebody's house and he brings out a bag full of money and places, places it before you with the intention of giving it to you. You cannot dip your hands into the bag to take the money unless he tells you to do so. Blasphemy amounts to resistance to the Holy Spirit. Whoever does anything to defile or distort the world, the world has defiled himself and has himself to blame. Brethren, I do not want to take you further because this is a very short and 
explicit gospel which is understood by you and all the inhabitants of the world. It is merely given so that you will know your relative stand, what you are doing and the punishment you are inflicting upon yourself and upon the whole world. It is said, you who are uncircumcised in the heart and in the air, you continue to resist the will of the Holy Spirit. Do you not realize that when you speak evil, that you are resisting the Holy Spirit? It is said that on the day of judgment, every person will recount the vain words that proceeded from his mouth. The hand does not cause trouble in the world. The legs do not. Food does not. Money does not. But evil words cause trouble in the world. Only gentle and peaceful words can rebuild the world. Neither money, nor house, nor food can rebuild the world. The only thing that can perfect the world is good words. The Holy Spirit. Let our first lesson be read. Listen attentively to what happens, what will happen, and what has happened. First lesson, then Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Brethren, have you heard that? It is the same statement made by our Lord Jesus Christ, that whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man shall be forgiven, but whosoever speaks evil distorts the word, defiles a man, is defiling himself and no other person. Similarly, whoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. It is a clear thing that your punishment in hellfire starts immediately you make such utterances even in a jovial mood. Without the words, there is nothing made that was made. Right from now that you have known that the word is God, you have also realized that all that proceeds out of your mouth is God. You should know how to control your tongue even if somebody wants to pluck out your eyes, you will learn to keep quiet. What was used in destroying the world? It was the word. Without the word, there is nothing made that was made. The word kills and also keeps alive. If right from today, the inhabitants of the entire world, including angels, retrace their steps, and learn to speak good words, you will see what men will be capable of doing throughout the entire world. Somebody can war, wink his eyes at your sight, or can frown his face, or make some unpleasant gestures, or become fastidious. But all these can be forgiven him. Somebody who rolls on the ground, reaps, weeps, wails, and laments will be forgiven. When you speak evil, it is unpardonable. Action speaks louder than words. You will remember when the hawk told God that it needed something for food. God sent him to the world to pick on whatever it would find and make it its food. So the hawk went 
in the first instance and picked on the young of an owl. The mother owl said nothing but keep quiet. On arrival, God asked him what the mother owl had said when its young owl was carried away. When God was told that the mother owl said nothing, the ark was asked to return the young owl immediately, since it could not discern the mother owl's mind. The ark was sent back to look for another prey. This time it picked a chick. When the end saw this, it shouted and pursued the ark and nearly collected back the chicken. The hawk made up its mind that since it had narrowly escaped from such a ferocious mother, it will not go there again. When the story was told to the Almighty God, he told the hawk that the chicken will be its food since that was all the hen could do. And up till now, the chick has always been the food for the hawk. How the word eventuates. If you do know that the word is God, you should not defile or misuse or distort it. Should you try to misuse it, then you have misused yourself. All the words you speak come to manifest in you. Somebody may explain that he will die in an accident. It has been written against him. At any time he will die in an accident. Another person may say that he will die no matter the circumstances. He will also die because he has made the pronouncement upon himself in your office. You may intend to take some casual leave to attend to some pressing family problem. For your reason, you may deceive your head of department that an elderly person is dead in your family. Your reason will be sound enough for the leave to be granted. But not long after, an elderly person in your family actually dies. In another, in, in another circumstances, you may claim that you are sick and so apply for sick leave, whereas you are perfectly well. Not long after, the vibration of the word would go forward and bounce back as a boomerang and become eventuated. Sickness will accordingly beset you. You may deny that you have money whereas you have some money you may deny that you may not have money but whereas you have some money in the house not long after you will not find any money left in your house at times you may help people and after playfully saying that you will no longer do any good thing to anybody but as a matter of fact you no longer can do good to people this is the efficacy of words it is more expedient to be mute than to speak evil when you say that your village is very bad that there is no good thing in it where will you get the good thing from have you not realized the words which say whosoever speaks against the Son of Man shall be forgiven, but whosoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven? When you make the pronouncement upon yourself that when you do good, you are paid back with bad coins, who will ever do good to you when you have already made evil pronouncements upon yourself? When you say God does not love you, God has departed from you, God has punished me, God does not exist, 
These words stand manifested. There is a local adage which says that the mouth of a monkey kills the monkey and not the monkey itself. It is your mouth that kills you. The tongue is only a messenger. It is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. An evil man speaks from the evil treasures of his heart. A good man speaks out of the good treasures of his heart. The tongue is only a messenger. If it is not sent, it will not go on an errand. That is why it is said, Whosoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. You can deny any personal food or garment or accommodation or anything at all. But do not say anything that is evil against any person. What we have to realize is that he who comes from heaven is greater than he who is on earth. He who comes from earth speaks about earthly things, what he hears and what he sees on earth. The one in heaven speaks what he hears and what he sees in heaven, but very many people do not believe in him. Always listen to him, even if somebody beats you up. Do not mind so much about the pain. Always listen to your spirit. Murder is a product of anger. Why it is said any person who is angry is that every evil thing derives from anger. It is with anger that you can speak evil words. Moses said that whosoever kills will be killed. But our Lord Jesus Christ said, Whosoever is angry, because killing emanates from anger. Our Lord Jesus Christ was examining the cause and the effect. Killing is the effect of the matter. Moses said, Whosoever kills. But our Lord Jesus Christ knows that anger is the cause and the effect. What prompts one to kill is anger. That is why he says whosoever is angry is liable to judgment. You will agree with me today that everything in the world is created by God. You will also agree with me that without God there is nothing that exists and nothing would exist in the world. Flesh and blood has no work at all to do. Money has nothing to do. There is nothing in the world, including trees, which have anything to do. It is the word which is God who does everything in the world. If you go to a school, what is used there? Is it not the word at work? In the law court, who delivers the judgment? Is it not the word? If you go to the marketplace, who is buying and selling? Is it not the word? When you go to a church to worship, who is preaching and practicing the word? Is it not the word? If you go to a juju priest, what produces the preparation of concoction? Is it not the word? If you go to the scientist, who is the scientist? Is it not the word? If you go to all the secret societies, you will see that they operate through the word. All those who make invocations at the cemetery use the word. Everything is teleguided by the word. It is similar to you going to somebody's house and he complains to you that he is worried by mermaid and witchcraft and apparition and that you should prepare a charm for his protection. You may tell him to kneel down and ask whether he believes in our Lord Jesus Christ. You will pray for him when, the, when he answers in the affirmative. In the process, 
you will mention all his heart's desires like your troubles are gone from today. Nothing disturbs your life again. From today you will see and know peace. These words will become flesh. The words will certainly make him re recuperate and his health restored. If you go to a juju priest, he will gather his materials together and invite you to pray. He may direct you to say, God of heaven and of earth, right from today, you do not want persecution. You want your house to be at peace. The juju priest himself will add more words. What is doing the work here? Is it not prayer? Is it not the word? You have erred when you say that you have never prepared any charm against any person. Have you not been raining curses on somebody? You have erred when you say you have never killed somebody's fault. What about all that you have been uttering that God should punish somebody or that a person should die or that he should be impoverished. That is just the act you are counting. You have killed the man. If you should go to a juju priest and request that he should prepare for you something which will kill your fellow man by a motor accident or a gunshot. These are evil words emanating from your evil thoughts that act. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. It is the word that does everything in the world. Someone can prepare a certain concoction and spread it on the road. The aim of which is to kill Okon, Ajuku, or Edith. Or Basi, if they pass along the road, note that he only mentioned Okon Azuko and maybe two or three other persons. Everybody will pass freely through that road, but immediately Okon Azuko or Edith or Basi will pass through the road, something will happen to them. It is the materialization of the evil pronouncement. It is not caused by the leaves, nor the mud, nor the root, nor the bark of trees used in making the concoction. It is the word you have spoken that will enable one to grow in righteousness and grace of God. Name influences a man. You are expected to bless and not to curse. Because you do not realize the power of the word and that the word is God, that is why you go on giving your children names which may be interpreted as Sickness, darkness, hatred, bad omen, dead, I am not happy, poverty, what have I done to them? I will never be happy, bad things, and so on. These names have their effects on the bearers. The names wage war against the bearers. All names of their meaning. That is why you may answer three names, some of which are opposite the other. The opposite names, which are incompatible, will continue to fight themselves. That this action might create untold hardships for the owner. 
Today you have realized that there is no white person in the world. There is no, there is neither ghost, nor mermaid, nor apparition, nor witchcraft. The only phenomenon who exists in the world is the word. By, you, by your words, you are justified. And by your words, you are condemned. When you say, I am a poor man, you must certainly be poor. No matter how much you struggle to get money, you will be poor. When you say that your family is poor, until the end of the world, your family will remain poor. It is neither the hand nor the leg, but the mouth which produces your food. God has at all times existed here in the world, but the world has never known him. When you ask somebody not to break your hand because you use them to earn a living, I am telling you that you do not use your hands to earn a living, but rather that you use the word of your mouth, which is God. When you want somebody not to break your tiny legs, because you use them in traveling to places to fend for yourself. It is not the legs which give you food, but the words of your mouth. Whatever you require, speak the word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but there is no word that comes out of your mouth which will not be manifested. Can you now realize how you are cursing and blaspheming against the Holy Spirit? Can you realize how you allow evil communication to proceed out of your mouth? Who permits you to speak vile? Have you not realized that this teaching is the recondite wisdom of God, which no person possesses since the world was? This is the era of regeneration. If you watch very carefully from January to December every year, you will not, you will note that no evil communication proceed out of my mouth. It is what I mind most in the realization that the word is God. Perfect words mean the Holy Spirit. It is the word of peace, of love of patience, of faith, of meekness, of humility, and of temperance. As the word was used in past generations in destroying the world, so will the word be used in this age for, re for recreation. This is the time when everything is recreated. You are now being remolded and given a new life. I should not have given you this gospel because it is higher and beyond your comprehension. That is why those who were seeking for the knowledge of truth would startle on hearing this because they would claim that it would have been given to them, to, it, it would have been given to men who have attended certain heights in life and not to dogs. But as our Lord Jesus Christ had already promised, prophesied, the wise have been called, the rich have been called, and prominent men have been called, but they have rejected the invitation. I came for the learned, the wise, the professors, the scientists, and those who claim to be knowledgeable to hand down this wisdom to them, to aid them in performing their roles, but they refuse. But now, I have no other alternative than to go to the streets, the roadside, the edges and everywhere in order to impart these real words of wisdom to you, the ignorant and the uninformed. Whoever 
does not offend with his tongue is perfect. Can you now realize that the word is God? The word brings into existence anything which would not exist. The word also cause what is in existence to terminate. If you have been very sick and you say, from now on, I will not be sick again. From that time onward, you will not be sick again. If you also say, right from today, my town is good, there is no more evil in it. The inhabitants are all children of God. That will come to pass. It will not even need your, need your going to the village or town. You will notice that the Father will systematically change them. When you say, I love everybody and everybody loves me, I have no problem anywhere. Nothing happens to or worries me. When you say these, lie down and sleep, nothing will happen to you. That is why it is said in many things we do offend, but whoever does not offend with his tongue, such a person is righteous. He can control himself and can also control the whole world. Good words are more precious than gold. How much money did Isaac give his son Jacob? You are witnesses that Isaac gave no money to Jacob. He simply called and blessed him, pronouncing certain things upon him. All these words manifested in Jacob when Esau returned and asked for his own blessing, Isaac told him that there was no other blessing. Isaac used the same word of mouth without realizing himself what the word stood for. The moment you realize that the word is everything and that the word is God, you will take control of yourself and be very cautious of what you say. When you know what the word is and you have done from today your eyes and eyes and ears will be open, you will only say that which is good. It is said that Every time, God is always existing here with us, but we do not recognize him. Have you not realized that God dwells within you, in your mouth, beside you, inside your organ, but you have never taken cognizance of this? During this color bar area, Corister's Association Week, the Father has revealed and laid bare all these things to all the four corners of the world so that they will be saved. You have noticed that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke in parables, for without a parable, he would not speak. He had a different mission altogether let our second lesson be read listen attentively so that you can hear exactly what is happening in your marital homes what happens between parents and children what happens in villages towns prayer houses and churches in the marketplaces offices and everywhere in the world.